Well, good evening to you, traveller. Taking in the sea air, I see. What am I doing here? Oh, I pass this way from time to time so as to share stories with Salty, the dockyard class 07 shunter. In fact, he just so happened to tell me a rather interesting one that I really think you'll like. Come, traveller, let's perch on these crates whilst I tell you the tale called Keeper of the Light. Salty, the Class 7 dockyard shunter, loves nothing more than working by the sea. Go anywhere in Brendam Docks and you can be sure that you'll hear Salty singing one of his many sea shanties whilst doing his work. Oh, one for the more than glory, two for the early June. Free for the man who stands his room. As well as singing shanties, Salty loves to tell stories. At the end of a long, hard working day, engines such as the clay pit engines, the dockyard chanters, and the Caledonians would gather round to hear Salty tell one of his many tales, much to the annoyance of Cranky the dockside crane. One particularly foggy evening, Bill and Ben rolled in from a long day working the pits and found Salty chatting to Donald. Ah, hurry me, hearties! No doubt ye be wanting to hear another one of me tall tales after a hard day's graft. Be I right? Oh yes, Salty. We've worked ever so hard. And we think a couple of your stories is just a thing to put us to sleep. Right, Ben? Oh, absolutely, Bill. So come on, Salty. Tell us a really good one. Hey, I've got a much better idea, Salty. How about you? Don't tell another one of your stories, and we'll go straight to bed instead, eh? Ugh, hold your wish, you overgrown fishing rod, and let the man tell his story now. Ha <laughs> ha, well said, matey. Now then, a long, long time ago, there were a ship named Krakatoa. Heard it. Oh, have ye? Yeah, we all know how it ends. Especially, Especially me, as, as one. one. I was I thou, thou happy. happy. And two, and two, I was, I was the, the one, one who told you the story, story in the in first place. place. Ah, so you were. Oh, what about the tale of Peg Leg Meg and her? Heard it. The tale of Sligo Rock? Ditto. How about the one with the giant squid? I'm afraid you've told us that one as well, laddie. Great! For once, Sony doesn't have a story to tell. So, about that idea of us all going to sleep, I still think it's a pretty good idea. Anyone else? Now, Salty was never usually lost for words, and Cranky's goading was starting to get to him, so he fought long and hard. As his eyes scanned the surroundings, an idea flew into his air intake as his vision came to rest on a long-since-decommissioned lighthouse. See yonder lighthouse? There is another reason why the Fat Controller and Arbor Master had that decommissioned besides the cost of upkeep. What's that, Salty? Ah, uh, before it was decommissioned, that lighthouse used to be manned by a keeper named David MacDonald. David came from a long family of keepers who tended many a house and ship through the generations, even during the wars despite the blackouts. Now, David lived in the keeper's lodge with his young daughter Natalie, a fine lass indeed. As far as David was concerned, all he really needed to get by through the harsh conditions of being a keeper was the never dwindling youthful spirit of Natalie. If anything were to happen to you, lassie, I don't know what I'd do with myself. But a few years later, he were destined to find out. In the summer of 32, scarlet fever hit the island in an outbreak the likes them in the medical profession had never seen. As a result, the shipping industry ground to a halt. Liners and trampers were forced into quarantine methods of flying yellow flags to indicate they was awaiting inspection and flying checkered flags if the infection were found aboard. Goods were also forbidden from entering or leaving the docks as well, but David cared nothing for any of that because he had bigger problems. Natalie contracted the disease from a friend at school. David tended to her knees just as much as he tended to the lamp, but it were all in vain, for Natalie died not two days after she turned eleven. David was devastated. He tried to continue with his work, but the shock of Natalie's death got to him, and it pushed him into a dark place. What did he do then, Salty? I were just coming to that lad. Well, one night, David had enough. He just couldn't go on, as everything around him reminded him of Natalie. 
He drank an entire bottle of whiskey, fetched his granddad's old naval flintlock, and climbed the stairs to the top of the lighthouse. Folks say before he did it, he spoke into the wind, Dinna fast yourself, lassie. Your dear old daddy will be with you the soon. You dinna mean. Aye, that I do. I found him the next day slumped against the lamp, his granddad's pistol clutched in his right, and Natalie's photo in his left. What a sad story. So the lighthouse was closed down because of the suicide then? In a way, yes. But like I said, there's a part of the report that the fact controller keeps secret. And that's the fact. The lighthouse is haunted. Oh, oh shut, shut up, up, Frankie. Frankie. Go out, Go out Shortly after David were buried, folks started seeing lights turning on and off in the lighthouse in the lodge. And one fella reports he were in the generator room when he heard the door to the stairwell bang and a man crying. Also, on some nights, folks say they can see the silhouette of a man holding a pistol in the beam of the light and hear the words uttered by David followed by a single gunshot. After hearing this tale, no man would agree to work there, and the fat controller closed it down. Well, that was quite the story, Salter. Ah, uh, he was... Look at the time. I'd better be get... Better be getting back to the Little Western. Or Dougie will take have taken my, fa my, my spot. And with that... Engines began to disperse whilst the cranes went to sleep. Bill and Ben were heading back to the pits and decided to take the route that led past the old lighthouse. Quite the story, eh Ben? All that talk of sickness and death, ooh, it makes my axles tingle. Ben was about to reply when something in the lighthouse made him stop suddenly, causing Bill to nearly run into him. Ow! Watch out, Ben, you dopey git! I knew he went straight up, your bunker. What are you looking at anyways? There's a man in the lab room. Don't be daft, there's no man. But Bill cut off as he looked up at the lighthouse. Silhouetted against the glass, he could see the figure of a man, unevenly pacing back and forth. Suddenly, the exterior door to the lamp room flew open, and a voice called out into the night, Dinner fast, fast yourself, yourself lassie. lassie. Your dear the Lord, Lord Daddy, Daddy will be with you this soon. soon. And then, the door slammed shut, and there was a sudden gunshot. <gasps> ah! It's in! My dog's ghost! Don't be so daft, Ben. There's no such thing as ghost. Edward says so. Then perhaps you'd be so kind as to explain what we just saw, dear brother of mine? Duh. We obviously saw Salty's idea of a prank. The driver somehow got keys to the place and climbed to the top of the stairs with a cat pistol, and Salty told him to say those words, and fire off the pistol to make us think it's the ghost of MacDonald. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. And if you don't believe me, I'll confront Salty tomorrow. Show you up as the gullible little prat you are. Hey, I'm not a gullible little prat! You are. I'm not. Are. Not. The twins continued to bicker as they headed back to the clay pits. Next day, when they had a break in their work, the twins found Salty at one of the fueling stations dotted around the docks. Um, Salty, can you have a word? Better make it quick, lad. Miyuki's due to the dock in berth five in a few minutes, and she's carrying machinery parts for a car factory in Kildane. So I needs to be ready to meet her if she's to unload on time. Right, well, we just wanted to congratulate you on the prank you pulled on us last night. Well, I'd graciously accept the compliment, lad. If only I knew what the heck you were talking about. Come on, Salty, you can't kid a kidder. We're talking about the prank where you got the driver to climb to the top of the lighthouse and tell me David McDonald's ghost. Bill trailed off as he noticed Salty was looking at him with a deadly serious and steely look. For a while, no one said anything until Salty broke the silence. Let's get one thing straight, me. My driver enjoys a joke as much as the next scallywag, but he knows better than to do something as daft as to trespass on private property and climb to the top of an unsafe structure that could fall at any minute. But I was sure. Well, ye fought wrong, didn't ye? No, I don't want to hear any more about that lighthouse, young William. Just you return to your duties for I have you court-martialed and killed, or do I make myself clear? Hey, hey, Captain. And Bill steamed back to the clay pits as fast as his pistons would pump. Salty sighed and rolled over to the lighthouse. He stared at the base of it for a while, before looking up at the shattered windows of the lamp room. <sighs> I'm sorry. 
What of all the increased workload recently, I must have foolishly forgotten the date. Had I known, sir, I'd have never told that story last night. Will ye be so kind as to accept this old sea dog's humblest apologies? There was a sudden breeze, a gull cried, and Salty smiled, thanking ye kindly, sir. Bill never questioned why Salty had snapped at him that day. Given the way the O7 had looked and spoken to him, he figured it was best not to bring it up. Salty still tells the tale of David MacDonald and his lighthouse, but he is always careful never to tell it on the one night when a man's silhouette can be seen in the beam of the light and the words, Dinner fast, fast yourself, yourself lassie. lassie. Your, Your dear, dear Lord, Lord Daddy, Daddy will be with you this soon. Dance on the wing. There you are, Traveller. Proof that I am not the only one on the island who can tell you such riveting stories. Perhaps you should ask Salty to tell you one of his stories. Why, yes, I think that's a marvellous idea, Traveller. Just be mindful you consult the calendar before you bring up the subject of David and Natalie MacDonald. Ah, the clock doth toll the hour and summons me back to my work. Godspeed, lonely Traveller, I remember Although our loved ones may leave us physically, know that they will be waiting to greet us from our time to cross to the other side.